One more thing before I let you go, I, I gotta go do, uh, gotta go do the show. One more thing, give Manny a call. Uh, tell him I want to. Uh, tell him I, I want a hundred. Uh, 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 the Leafs in three. Yeah. Why? No, they're too good for that. Three. Yeah. Bye. Ah. Uh, why not mix it up a little bit? Welcome to season two episode 20 on this beautiful may the 20th summer has arrived in niagara now it's only going to be here for a few more days but we might as well uh, enjoy it while it lasts welcome to niagara 411 live with lee Sterry. that's me we are powered by we stream that's kevin jack behind the camera we'll chat with him a little bit uh, later also we are powered by we stream we are fueled by gales gas bars limited happy to have them as always as our title sponsor we are also supported by performance heating and air carlo and his gang thank you very much enwick niagara's high-speed internet provider urban and rural locally owned and operated as well as verge insurance group for all your insurance needs right here in niagara think verge and we are hosted as per usual by fiddler's poor house come on in we're going to sit in the window and have a chat about some pretty cool things that are going on in niagara and in your life and we'll bring you up to date with all that stuff oh nice to be a little bit out of the sunshine it is a hot day today in 30 seconds we'll be right back and fill you in on what's coming up stay here Hello, and uh, welcome again to season two, episode 20 already. Now, uh, we have one hot window going on here at uh, Fiddler's Poor House on uh, St. Paul Street. Glad to have you along for the ride today. You may see me from time to time do a little bit of this. Uh, but that's because uh, if, if I didn't, it would be not at all attractive. So um, welcome to the program. Want to kick things off. I'm going to tell you uh, what we have coming up on the show. But something really exciting is happening tonight at midnight. And this is exciting not just for Niagara, but for all of Canada. And we have a brand new album being released, uh, Tragically Hip. This came as a surprise to just about everybody that has anything to do with or knows anything about or is a fan of the Tragically Hip. And that covers, uh, well, pretty much all of us. Uh, a new album coming out tonight, Six Cuts. It's called Saskadelphia. And uh, we can't play much of it because they haven't given us much of it yet. But there is, uh, there is a little trailer. There is a little... Uh, preamble that they gave us. So let's do that right now, Kevin. Let's. way too long since we have uh, heard that voice and of course yes uh, that is uh, Gord Downey and uh, obviously these were archived pieces of audio that the band had put away and uh, probably remastered or completed the musical part or whatever the heck we're not exactly sure uh, of the backstory to this but that's happening tonight at midnight the tragically hips latest album six cuts Welcome to Saskadelphia, and I'm certain at some point on that album that uh, we'll find out where the name came from. I'm thinking, now, I realize this is a stretch, but I'm thinking it might have something to do with uh, Saskatoon or Saskatchewan and uh, Philadelphia. Well, boy, aren't I a brain trust. Okay, <laughs> so, um, so there we go. And also, as we alluded to at the office uh, down the street, this is a big, big day, night, for hockey fans 
across the country, but mainly here in Ontario. And, you know, well, Quebec too. But when you grow up here, nine times out of ten, and I know we got Edmonton Oilers fans on there, we got Flames fans, I know we got, uh, we got Boston fans, because uh, the Flyers used to be the farm team for the Boston Bruins, and uh, there's a big Black Hawk contingent here as well because of the St. Catharines Black Hawks years ago. So I realize it doesn't just boil down to Habs and Leafs, but tonight is a, a big, big night for uh, both leaps Le leaps <laughs> leaps and apps fans puck drop is 7:30 the first time that Toronto and Montreal have been in a playoff series since 1979 happens tonight. Kevin, you're not going to be watching that game, are you? 100%. I'm going to be glued <laughs> to the couch. I'm watching that thing. The big screen. Sorry, kids. Cartoons are downstairs tonight yeah. because the hockey game rules all. And for me, Lee, I grew up with the Toronto Montreal rivalry being something I was told existed, yeah. honestly, I didn't really live that because in my life they've never really played each other in the playoffs. No, I went through these great battles of Ontario where all of a sudden the Ottawa Senators were the hated enemy, and for the last number of years it's been the Boston Bruins. Sure, and yeah. now finally I get to see Toronto and Montreal lock horns in the postseason. It's and that's be mine. It's that be is awesome. that is as it should be. So if there's if there's one thing interesting that's come out of this whole COVID thing, and you might call it a season with an asterisk beside it for all sports because it's affected all sports. I mean, baseball, basketball, I mean, the Raptors were a, a mere shadow of themselves uh, this past season. But nevertheless, that, that notwithstanding, uh, the, thing with the, the thing with the Leafs and the, the Canadians is the fact of just what Kevin said. It was so rare that you had an opportunity over the past decades to to get that rivalry ramped back up again. This, that was always my complaint with uh, the Montreal Expos being in the National League and the Blue Jays being in the American League is like, what's the point? We, we, can't, we can't root for the... Now, the only thing that could happen is if they ended up meeting each other in a World Series or, or something of that nature, which they almost did until the players went on strike and that's the whole thing up. Well, Toronto almost faced Montreal, famously 1993, right? The Wayne Gretzky high stick on yeah. Doug Gilmore and Kerry Frazier. Yeah. I don't think Kerry Frazier does a speaking engagement anymore where that's not the first point of conversation. Yeah, you know somebody, I, with all, back to the hockey thing, then we'll get off this, but uh, there is, with all due respect to this man, and he is a wonderful guy, and uh, he's a good speaker, and created Canadian history, uh, but if I hear Paul Henderson talk about the goal one more time, I think I'm going to blow my brains out. It's just like, <laughs> now you got a problem with Paul Henderson? No, I told you I don't have a problem. It, it's just he made it. He made an entire other career off one goal. Off that goal. Yep, I would agree. And in, 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 uh, incredible. So now I'm going to get all kinds of hate mail. I know, I know, I know. I watched the game too. I saw the goal live. I'm, I'm an old guy. I remember watching it. It's just, uh, it just popped into my head. All right, enough of that. We have a massive, or we, we may still, I'm not quite sure of the immediate update on this, but this was quite a big fire. There's some interesting things going back and forth here. There's Lincoln Fire, uh, which there's a a really great uh, aerial shot of uh, Beamsville area where that fire occurred or is occurring. Now, Kevin, off the top of this, there was quite a bit of confusion because somebody called it the turkey barn. And then someone else said, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's the chicken enclosure, the, the chicken coop, barn, whatever. And then there were others that said, well, well, who cares whether it's turkeys or chickens? Well, I'm, uh, and then somebody commented, well, it is important because uh, I know the guy that owns the chicken farm <laughs> or the turkey farm that's next door and or something to that effect. No, that's exactly how it played out. Yeah. So it seems it's and, a turkey farm or sorry, it's a chicken. farm. It's actually a ah. chicken farm, not the turkey farm. Uh, who knew they were that close together? Uh, either way, it's a foul story. Really? That's, I'm sorry. We, we brought you all this way for that? I'm sorry. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's a... Well, it, here's where it is. It looks huge, but... 
So it's right in this area. It's Fly Road and I think Cosby. Yeah. And you can see as you zoom in on it that there are a number of barns or coops or whatever right there. Yeah. I hazard to guess that it's this one, but I don't know for sure. People said it's about half a kilometer down the road okay. from Fly. Now, as we understand it, though, or I would not have been making any sort of horrible, horrible uh, attempted humor, um, is the fact that there were no chickens in there, I understand, at the time. So there was, it wasn't tragic to the point of animals being destroyed. It was tragic, though, to the point of someone's property definitely being destroyed. Pretty spectacular fire but it was actually the chicken enclosure as opposed to the turkey enclosure that is next door or close by. All right, just to clarify that. Uh, okay, there's going to be um, also, with regard to your long weekend coming up, happy long weekend, by the way. It'll be, as per usual, th during this COVID thing, it'll be another strange May 24th weekend. But it might, be, uh, it might be loosened up a little bit. We're not 100% sure yet. We do know that there is going to be some sort of an announcement uh, from Ontario uh, officials. Not Ford yet. He's coming on later today. But at 1 o'clock this afternoon, there is going to be some announcement made, maybe a tee-up for later today, but about the COVID situation in Ontario. That announcement and update happens at supposedly one o'clock this afternoon and then uh, your premier ford is going to be on at three today making a statement about the what should i i think they called it the gradual reopening of ontario and what's see that we uh, see they scrapped the color system yeah no more colors yeah no more colors yeah. I, I was just getting used to the colors i guess that's how they keep us on our toes i kind of like the colors but they but but the problem with the colors is the fact that people from one color would go to the place with the other color. And discriminating on basis of color we know isn't good. No, we don't do that. No. We do not. We do sure that. don't do it on this show. I was just, we were chatting about this, Kevin and I, a little bit earlier, about how, and we're very proud of this fact, actually. And, and the thing is, we didn't do it, I suppose, consciously. It, it just sort of fleshed out this way is the diversity that we have been able to provide in this uh, in this venue uh, in this forum of Niagara 411 live has been really quite impressive we were running down the guests that we've had on uh, since the show began and especially over the last oh, couple of months or whatever it is and um, we were comp trying to compare ourselves to other media be it broadcast media print tech uh, digital whatever um, and I, Kev, correct me if I'm wrong, but we sort of, in the comparison, realized that we have been as, if not more diverse than any of them uh, in the area with the kind of content that we've had a chance to do here. Absolutely, if you look back just this yeah. month, we spoke to Sherry Darlene of Justice for Black Lives right here in Niagara. She joined us from North Carolina. Where her great-grandmother had just passed. Her great-grandmother was the oldest living person in America before her passing. At 113? 16, I think. 16? 116. And then you look, last week we had uh, Jordi Kiesi on. Yeah. Today we're going to have a young African-Canadian, and I think he traces his roots back to uh, the Caribbean. Yes. But he lives at St. Catharines now. This guy Kite is coming on in 15 minutes. Right. And then at 1 o'clock, Nigel is coming on to talk about the colored history and the colored cemetery in Fort Erie, yeah. and we know that's a dated term. Yeah, Nigel, uh, he has been on the program before, not for a while, but you might know him from his YouTube channel, Nigel's Cheap Vlogs, and he did one that caught our attention and Nick's attention. By the way, also, uh, I forgot a, a credit right at the beginning. Thank you, Nick, and all of you contributors to Niagara 411. Uh, we have content sharing and, uh, and communication routes back and forth between Niagara 411 Live and and Nick at Niagara 411, so always a pleasure to work with you on this program, Nick. Uh, with regard to Nigel, so uh, he happened to find this cemetery that uh, is, and it, it's our black 
it's got Fort Erie Black Cemetery on the on the sign. You'll see it. We'll play some of the video for you when uh, when Nigel comes on. And to go to Kevin's point again, it's something that over the years some people might suggest is inappropriate to have up there. But it's thank goodness not the way the the city fathers went with it and decided that it was a, a huge and pivotal part of the history of our area and that area in particular Fort Erie and uh, Nigel's going to be coming on to talk to us about it at about one o'clock today. So getting back to where we began Lee and yeah. I started thinking about the other MSM mainstream media yeah. in Niagara. Oh it's, it's, an, it's, it, it's an anagram now is it MSM? MSM. It's, um, it's really white. Like it really is and both of you and I I mean hey here I am as a white guy complaining about mainstream media being being white. So, yeah. so I get it, right? I get the yeah, irony yeah, yeah, in that. Yeah, me too. But I, I can't think of anybody that is non-white in Niagara media. I can't either. We were, we were, uh, I can't think of, I mean, we used to work for a radio station. Yeah. I can't think of a regular guest that they have on that's not middle-aged and white. Like, I no. mean, I'm being perfectly honest. I don't. I could scroll up and down trying to find... Yeah, it's true. Other than if, if it's topic-driven, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yes. But on, on, they have regular recurring guests, and they're all middle-aged, they're all white. Isn't that what we're supposed to be moving away from? And the the, the interesting part of all of this is we kind of fell into the same trap of not realizing this until we actually started to discuss it before the show and realized the number of guests that we have had on that you could uh, you could arguably say represent diversity in in things in and around Niagara so it's uh, we're pretty we're pretty pleased uh, with that and again it's it's not like we set out to do that it's just that those uh, a, a lot of those guests caught our attention a lot of their stories caught our attention and it just uh, it just indicates that we will chat and this is where I'm going with this as well we will chat with anyone at any time during this program we have two guests today as I mentioned uh, we've got kite uh, a local musician business person coming on at 1230 and uh, we have uh, Nigel coming on at one o'clock between those two planned segments we have a wide open forum for you to participate in this program we make this invitation to you every week if it's something that you want to take issue with us on by all means we're here to listen uh, if it's something that you want to tell us about somebody that you think we should know about including yourself we're here to listen if there is something happening in Niagara that you would like to shed a light on or promote or create discussion on or uh, maybe begin a debate about, we are here for you to do that. It's an open invitation. It is every week. Uh, we have no sacred cows here, which is an old expression, I know. Uh, you might not have heard it before, but it means uh, that we're not protective uh, or slanted in any way so that if there's something that we've done or something that we're doing uh, that you want to take us to task for, fill your boots. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're wide open for it. And because we are so wide open with our acceptance of whatever content, as long as it's uh, ethical, moral, and um, not breaking libel laws and things of that nature, the usual things. But as far as opinions and things of that nature are concerned, it's for that reason that we appreciate our sponsors. Because our sponsors do not uh, dictate content to us. We don't have to run approval for content by our sponsors to see if it's okay with them that we put this on the show because they're sponsoring the show. We don't we don't do that. We don't have that kind of relationship. Uh, and for that, we appreciate the support of the businesses that have said, hey, we like what you folks are doing. We like that you're uh, an open commentary and or debate medium. And uh, we're on board. And if the, if the time ever comes that they don't want to be on board, that is entirely up to them 
to uh, to pull the pin and uh, and make a change. It's an, it's it's always it's always the option and, uh, uh, of our sponsors to do that. Lee, you mentioned. I mean, it is absolutely wide open, and obviously people are listening. So I want to welcome Gail onto the program. And here is Gail. How you doing? And. Unspeakably marvelous. Can you hear me? Unspe I can, so. <laughs> Unspeakably good, good. marvelous. I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. How can we I'm, help you today, Gail? I am so glad to pop back in again. It's been a while. It has. Um, and uh, things are going crazy with uh, home education. Yes. In both the region and still all over the world. Okay. Um, in fact, I'm in a conference uh, being run out of the UK tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. called Home. I'm out on a panel called Home Education Around the World. And uh, I can drop a link into the uh, comments for that. Sure. Um, and then on Saturday, I am doing a, um, offering a film screening, a free film screening of a movie called Class Dismissed. Okay. It, it's the story, uh, it's the documentary of a family who w uh, went through or went like the whole, every step they took in their decision and their choices to find something alternative that fit for themselves as a family and for their children. Excellent, excellent. Uh, yes, do post that link for, for sure. Now you said things were going crazy with homeschooling, and give us a bit of a Niagara update. What you've been, uh, what you've been up to, other than what you just told us, since the yeah. last time we chatted. Well, a lot of families are really fed up with the, um, the virtual learning. Um, I'm sitting about ten lot... feet from one of them right now. Yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> and 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 that is to be expected because. The way the system was designed was never meant for individual one-to-one. -one. It was meant for the classroom. It was, you know, so even virtually, it's it's impossible for a lot of families who don't want their their little ones strapped to a screen. And uh, I mean, it it's just not healthy for them to. Be. Gail, I'll I'll give you a little bit of insight. And these, yeah. you know, yeah. everybody has their own particular situation. So for our family, I've got a five and a seven-year-old at home right now. Well, that guy's a scooter duder right there. Wow. Right? Blasting the tunes out of his scooter. Hope he doesn't have to hear a siren anywhere near him. I've got a five and a seven-year-old at home, and that's drastically different than if you had a 10 and a 12-year-old. They need a lot of hand-holding. I, I mean, it's probably two or three minutes between the words daddy in our house during a schooling day. Then on top of it, our children attend French, um, not French immersion school, French school which means all the communication, all of the, the work is all done entirely in French with no accommodation for Anglophones. So in Even the communication with the parents, right? Right, so in our family, my wife is the one that's bilingual. My French is come see, come sa. <laughs> so here I am at home, I'm trying to be an entrepreneur, which is impossible with a five and a seven year old at home. I'm watching my business die and I'm watching my kids die as they struggle to learn online, which is just impossible for them. They're absolutely tuning out. My wife and I, for the first time last night, actually at least entertained the discussion, should we just pull them out? Yeah. Because it's almost useless. And, and that is an overwhelming number of people. And, and it's sad that it had to go that way. And yet, now people have realized what it is themselves it's like the the curtains being pulled back you know pay no attention to the man behind the curtain kind of thing yeah um and and that parents can help their children um they have there's so many helpful places online uh and in our community we have the niagara homeschoolers group uh facebook page that uh, more than welcome to um, have people come there and ask questions. Um, everybody's asking the same questions. So, um, because they're all new to this, right? Yeah. And, and they're asking what kind of supports are there? Do we get funding? Well, there's, there, there's 
so many of the same questions. Uh, are there people who can do this with my children when I go to work? Um, you know, that kind of thing. And and there are. There is, I, I would say, it's an overwhelming amount of information and support. Gail, which, could you, could, sorry to interrupt you, but could you do me yeah, a favor also? Sure. Uh, when we're finished here and whenever you have the chance sometime today is uh, post those links as well to those information sites I mean there's right there the home Niagara area home school group we just put up on the screen but um, whatever links that you might f think that uh, parents would find helpful uh, if you could put them in your comments as well we'd re really appreciate that absolutely because like I said and I'm happy to do that because like I said, the families are, you know, clutching at straws and they're getting frustrated and that doesn't help for the stress and anxiety in the children and the family unit, right? So um, the, my first advice to families that are challenged with this is to relax. And I know that's hard. Yeah. And then I, I, I have to say that three times, like relax, relax relax and then I want people to think about what their expectations are um, for their children because I'm in a lot of school leaders meetings and um, special uh, special meetings with people from school boards and and school leaders from actually around the world and and they talk about why are we making people jump through these hoops when, you know, the EQAO tests and, and that's just locally, but the testing is not going to be um, brought out. It's going to be filtered back in, right? And so for those people that are in the system, they can take advantage of those things if they choose to. Mm -hmm. But if it's causing stress in your family, between getting your kids to sit in front of a screen and, and do these things, then don't don't worry about meeting other people's expectations. That's a good. That's a good family, piece. Of, that's a good piece of advice. Keep your family healthy, yeah. safe, no, stress free. I, Gail, I made that decision yesterday. I mean, it was it was Wednesday, yeah. day three for both the kids and myself. They're looking outside, and I just pulled the plug at around 11 a.m. Said, "That's it. We're done." Good We're done. For this you. is this is not benefiting anyone, and right. moreover, I mean, I know everybody's got their own situation, but the school told us on Tuesday that my daughter would not have a teacher on Wednesday. Yeah. Like, what's? I don't want to say what's that about, but yeah, what's what's that about? Yeah. Like you're, you're, and if if you're in in person learning, in class learning. Uh, we were talking about this before as well. If your teacher's not available to come in to work, there was always a substitute or a teacher uh, that was available. Well, well, in virtual learning, you'd think it would be even easier. And my, my inside scoop on that, and my friend that works at the ministry, is that the teachers are leaving in droves. They're, they're taking their buyout packages, and um, every week she has to send out an email and a third to two thirds come back as, as bouncing because those people are no longer in mm. the educational um, environment. So, um, yeah, yeah that's, tough times. It, it's a challenge. Uh, it definitely is. And, and uh, the other thing that we're waiting to find out is uh, what Premier it's, Ford has to say today about the so-called gradual reopening. Of, of Ontario and there are those that are calling for him to open the classrooms if he opens recreational facilities as well. Well, Gail, we're heading into June. The school year is pretty much over. I mean, why, exactly. would, why would we put all these kids back in school now? It's entirely and pointless. And to be honest with you, 100% honest, which I always will be, I got an email from the Ministry of Education yesterday because I do operate a small alternative private school. Yeah. And it had all the um, information for opening up and how we're going to do things uh, in September. So. All right. So, yeah, there, there's an indication. Yeah. And and what to how things are going to go 
how they perceive things are going to gradually be like right. instead of 40 hours of compulsory volunteerism they're going to they're going to reduce that to 20 and and all sorts of things like that okay. so um that's one thing but the other big thing i'm hearing from families is they don't now that kids between 12 and 18 can get the shot yeah they don't want that the kids don't want it kids don't want to get the shot and and they're scared so well, um, i guess that's another element of this thing that we're going to have to deal with gail i gotta run element. but thank you gotcha. for uh clicking in and joining us and giving us an update and we look forward to your comments and your links and your posts and you're always very helpful we, we appreciate that thank you thank you and have a great day you too and a nice long weekend yeah bye bye all right um a, a, a welcome update, Kevin, that I wasn't expecting, and that's, again, uh, the reason we do this show is so people like Gail can come on and, and do that uh, for us. And we'll have another chance later to, to chat, about, uh, chat about this. Um, I'm assuming we have uh, Kite standing by, or will be... Uh, yeah, uh, he's just Cheryl. getting himself set, but uh, himself people, set up. people don't know who we're talking to, what yeah, it's let about. Yeah, let me know you... Uh, uh, let me let you know <laughs> who we're talking about. Yeah, we're talking about this guy. That's his. Uh, that's his recording. Fake smile, girl. Um, kite, who's. Uh, Given name at birth is Araya Felix. Uh, Araya Felix, perhaps, is how we pronounce that. Uh, but he is known as Kite. He's a CEO, artist, songwriter, recording engineer, manager, and uh, a and uh, person, among other things, born originally in Trinidad and Tobago, now living here in Niagara, uh, and goes by the name of Kite. Kite, welcome to the program. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. What's up? Oh, uh, summer is up by the looks of it. We've got, uh, wh where are you right now? Are you in St. Catharines now? I'm on Geneva Street. On Geneva I'm Street? At my house. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, although I've done a little bit of uh, looking into your background, and I could probably answer this original question, uh, I'll ask you, born in Trinidad and Tobago, um, when did you come here? Why did you come here? And uh, what's... Uh, what, what, okay, what's the, what's, what's yeah, the background? I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. I migrated to Canada, I would say, when I was about 20 years old. Me and my brother and two of my other friends, he went to OIA, the Ontario Institute of Audio Recording Technology. And I went to Western University where I did psychology and sociology. Wow. Uh, and, then, and then what happened after university? Well, I stayed in London for a while. I became an uncle and a father. I went back home for a year to manage a, a local artist and I came back to Canada and I based in St. Catharines with my brother based pretty much after that. I've been here for like five years since. Okay. And and you own a, you and your brother, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. own a, a country, a country. A, you own a country? No, you own a company that has uh, uh kind of interesting beginnings tell us about that well in the early inception of the company all of us we just i guess we're chasing stardom my brother always had a passion for mixing music recording music and production me and my friend kieran the nobrigo we just used to watch 106 and park and freestyle fridays and things of that nature right freestyle for fun and eventually some of my other friends started to tell me like you know you you're good at this why don't you try to carry it through or record a song do videos like that so we decided we want to start our own independent record label called Bascom entertainment now at first it wasn't Bascom entertainment we were going back and forth for a while with the name we were making up all type of crazy names you know <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> it so happened that my brother had a weird dream where someone came to him in his sleep and they gave him the word Bascom and they say that Anything that you put the word Bascom on will advance or will carry you forward. So we just said, well, why do we name the company Bascom, you know? Bascom, B-A-S-C-R-O-M. 
Uh, yes. And it's, uh, I think it's kind of a cool story because in essence, you're, as you like to say, moving entertainment forward. Yeah, right. pretty much. Yeah. Trying to advance. Yeah. Now, the, the song that we saw off the top, the, the uh, piece that we saw called uh, Fake Smile, the, uh, you did that a few years ago, right? Yeah, I actually, I actually wrote that song. I recorded it. I recorded it a couple of times, but I wrote that song four years ago, three and a half to four years ago, going on to four years ago. Okay. And so what is the status of uh, Bascrum Entertainment today? What are you guys doing on a day-to-day -day basis right now? Okay, well, my brother has a nine to five. Me, I trade cryptocurrency and Forex, and both of us, we still invested in buying new equipment, recording songs. We have a home studio that we work out of here in St. Catharines. Uh, we hooked up with G3 Designs, they're in charge of all visuals right now. Okay. So we're putting together a project that's called um, Bass from Fives Volume 2. We had a project that's online right now, it's called Bass from Fives Volume 1, and that was our first um, compilation that we put out in a while. So when you, when you record, where do you do that? In my home studio. Okay. I have a home studio right here. Uh, we have Pro Tools, T-Rax, Autotune, Melodyne, all the um, industry standard um, software, pretty much. How has this, how has this whole COVID thing uh, affected your business? I mean, it made me focus more on online and marketing because obviously we're not going to be performing anywhere or doing any big concerts for a yeah. while, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not looking forward to selling out any stadiums anytime soon, but I would like to <laughs> I would like people to go on YouTube and type in Kite Bastrom and listen to my music still, you know? Okay, Kevin wants to weigh in here for a sec. Hey, Kite, okay. uh, we're playing your music video now. I know you can't see it, but the audience can. And I mean, it's just splashed St. Catharines everywhere. You guys proud? <laughs> you guys proud to be kind of repping St. Kitts? I mean, Everybody watching this video can at least pick out a few landmarks. It's right downtown, uh, St. Catharines, Geneva Street, Montebello Park, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you had to represent which part you're from, right? So I'm not in Trinidad right now. I'm in St. Catharines. So everything I'm going to be doing for a while, I'm going to try to bring out as much St. Catharines scenery as possible, you know? Now, can you, you tell me this about the hip-hop scene in St. Catharines? It's actually thriving. There's a lot of people like you that have home studios that are putting out quality music and quality vids like this. Yeah, I heard a few of these um, artists from St. Catherine has been putting out some pretty good work. I've been watching out a few of them too. I'm open to collaboration if any of them on the um, live or watching this, just at me on Instagram, at CEO Bash from Kite, and let's talk some business. Let's try to make the thing even bigger than it is now, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think of some names that you can drop. I mean, we're good friends with uh, Jacob and the Mice on the Hurricane guys. He's an yeah. MC. I know Tino. Tino does good stuff. I, Tino, I'd play more of your music, man, but there's a lot of cursing in it. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know if you know, I don't know if you know Tino and his crew. They're putting out some good stuff. Uh, I, I like some of the stuff that I've seen from St. Catharines. No, I'm not familiar with them, but I'm very willing to get acquainted with them for sure. Uh, Kite, where does that... Where does that moniker come from? Where's the where's the handle kite, kite come from? Oh, when I was small, I always I don't know, I always had something about me where I think all the box and I do things differently. I always have a different perce perception and perspective about looking at things. And then one one of these days like we were I was looking for a rap name, right? I yeah. was calling myself like Araya Fire and a bunch of things that didn't make any sense. It was kind of goofy. And my friend made a joke one day and he's like, "Yo, bro, like you getting on like a kite bro like you're high like a kite or something like you know you, <laughs> like you're just detached everybody on on earth and you like you you somewhere up in the sky or something you, you're detached and i was like uh maybe i should just run with kite you know all right now um i know you mentioned in an article that uh, a couple of your big influencers are jay-z uh and tupac and yeah uh, and <laughs> to, <laughs> can you say that name again lee tupac Tupac. <laughs> Shut up. Tupac, Tupac. Even I can't say it. You say it. You say it, Kite. Uh, Tupac. Tupac. I said it right the first time. 
Kevin's Kevin's busting my chops here among a couple oh, okay. of uh, amongst a couple of other things. But hey, anyway, I, I'm about as white and not urban as I can get. But I didn't say anyway, it's Tupac. He wanted me to say Tupac. It, no, it is Tupac. All right. Say I, Tupac I always bust people right? when uh, when they're I in. I said it right. When people are at a store and they're like, "Hey, should I buy the Tupac?" I always say, "I prefer Biggie." I. I, <laughs> I am a professional. I know what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <Lee. laughs> Tried to throw me under the bus and it, it ran you over instead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, those are two, regardless of how you say their names, uh, mm -hmm. we in Canada would say JZ, by the way. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, those are two pretty big personalities to to have as uh, as influencers do do they uh, still influence you today and where would you if you look down the road uh, maybe 10 15 years from now because I know entertainment uh, business is a long-term strategy it doesn't really happen overnight um, yeah. where where do you want to take this oh to as far as far as far as I can take it on and as big as it can get, really and truly. I mean, like, now the passion is more about music. Before I wanted to be a star, but now I just want to make good music with people, okay. you know? Okay. And do, like, good videos, good visuals, have song, songs that people can listen to when they get older, things like that, that hit a, hit a home. Like, I'm not really that concerned about being the best rapper, per se, anymore. Like, back, back then, that was a dream to be the best rapper alive, yeah. you know? Now I'm just happy just taking it as far as I could take it you know what are your what are your opinions of uh, the big Canadian contemporaries like Drake the weekend I mean Canada Canada has uh, been showing oh, I love um, yeah I love Drake Cadence and his songwriting for sure and he's a very talented rapper I can't take anything from him he's a hard worker you know and I, uh, listen, to, I listen to Drake for sure hats off to Drake and there's a there's a good uh, there's a good genealogy here in Canada for urban music and uh, and I really hope that uh, you can stick around St. Catharines for a while and uh, and help put us on the map in that genre because it's uh, it it's huge uh, in the world today and uh, from what I've seen of what you do my friend um, you do high quality work so congratulations I appreciate that. It looks uh, it looks awesome. But what are you working on right now? I'm working on Bascom Vibes Volume Two on my solo project, which I'm going to call Quarantine with a K. Quarantine with a kid. All right. Quarantine with a K. With a K. Ah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, now, is this a is this music? Is it a video? What it's is going to be an album. An album. All right. Yeah. So when can we? See, I'm, I'm going to use the cool talk now, Kevin. When can we expect that to drop? <laughs> okay. Well, you should be looking somewhere around September in the football season. All right. So listen, uh, will you keep us up to date with what you're doing? For and, sure. And well, anytime. My next single yeah. is going to be with G3 Designs again. Yeah. And um, it's going to be something called So Rap Could Live On. That's my second single off of uh, the quarantine. Um, Fake Smile Girl is the face first single off of the quarantine all right so when that single comes out you may be sure and uh give us a give us a heads up you and guys we'll, will get the world premiere all right man we'll have you on for it yeah for sure okay uh kite thank you very much uh congratulations uh on your work and uh, we're happy to have you in niagara well i'm happy to be in niagara and i'm appreciative i appreciate that you guys called me and reached out to me to have me on your show our pleasure I'm very grateful anytime check in anytime you want Okay, nice. All right. Cheers. All right, cheers. Have a nice one. You too. What a nice young man. Absolutely. And if people didn't get a chance, well, you didn't really get a chance to hear the song, yeah. we're going to play it at the end of the show. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so stick around. Around 1.30 at the end of the program, we'll play Fake Smile Girl. I really dig in it. Like, I like the song. I like the song. I like the message. Uh, the quality of the production is excellent both audio as well as the visuals and top notch and, uh, and kudos to uh, mike farkas and the whole g3 crew yeah. just down the road there on st paul uh they did all the video there so you'll see them but uh g3 if you've got video professional video quality uh you know needs in niagara hit up mike and the crew and 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 
and kudos to uh, to them and the writers and the producers and uh, Kite, of course, who is the driving force behind it for making it so Niagara specific uh, in the visuals. Because when you're doing these things, um, people that ha haven't spent time in the media, the visual media in particular, it's very, very easy to buy stock film or what they call B-roll in the TV business uh, and it's somewhat similar in the film as well. Y you can get shots of cityscapes and stuff from all over the place and without having to go to the effort of creating your own. It's very simple to get cityscapes and whatnot that would have worked in that video. Uh, however, we've got local scenes. I know, it, it's it's funny, Lee, another uh, local radio station, and I actually criticized them on their Facebook page because they had a big campaign going about Shop Local, which is a great message. And they attach a video to it. It was this great 30-second little ad that was airing. And all of the footage in the video was stock footage, yeah. including people carrying shopping bags. And I was able to narrow down. I'm like, that's in England. Like, you know, you're looking. We pretty much know the shopping yeah, areas yeah, in Niagara. I mean, and you're like, probably shop somebody's local. carrying a Harrods bag or something. Exactly. I'm like, shop local, and you've got an image of people shopping. It's just a, wrong. Like, you it's just wrong. You couldn't walk outside or... Yeah. Go down to Niagara on the Lake Outlet Malls? or It's not like, and, and we prove this every week. Uh, we stream proves this every week by doing this show and the other projects that they work on to uh, keep their business going is the fact that they're, the technology is such today and they have taken advantage of the technology such as it is and actually exploited that uh, at, at a very reasonable cost to do high quality streaming and videos of, of, of anything, really. And there's no need to use stock footage like that anymore and, uh, and pretend that you're someplace you're not when, when, you can do it, when you can do it here locally. And that's just, that's just right. And that's, and that's why uh, the tip of the hat to Kite for, for not taking the easy way out for doing the the right thing, because as he said, I, I'm not in Trinidad, uh, Trinidad and Tobago anymore. I'm in St. Catharines, so I'm going to do St. Catharines, and Absolutely. and uh, and bless him for that. That's uh, that's cool. awesome. While we're talking about supporters and Niagara, uh, it's a perfect opportunity for me once again to um, thank Gail's Gas Bars for fueling this program as our title sponsor. Have done so since the very beginning of this year. We are now into episode 20 of season two of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. So uh, Jessica Friesen and uh, her crew at Gales, we couldn't be happier to partner with you uh, as our title sponsor. Also Carlo, uh, Performance Heating and Air, uh, always a pleasure to have you on board with us uh, as well high-speed internet provider in Niagara, Enwick. We are looking forward to having a conversation with them in the very near future. They're our newest sponsor. This is, what, uh, week three or four uh, of having uh, Enwick on board. And the, the key to all of our sponsors is the fact that uh, in Niagara, by Niagara, for Niagara, which is the mantra of this program, is theirs as well. And the, the thing that you should think about with regard to Enwick is the fact that be it rural, be it urban, be it whatever, they can provide you with high quality, high speed internet here in Niagara. As well as for all of your insurance needs, whatever it is you need protected, Verge Insurance Group, we thank them for coming on board and we also have an upcoming conversation with them uh, in the plans as well. So to, uh, to Gail's Gas Bars, Jessica, uh, our title sponsor, thank you, Carlo and Performance Heating and Air, Larry at Anawick, uh, Mark Shirk and his gang at Verge Insurance Group, we thank you folks very much. Uh, this means a lot to us because it's, uh, it's new, it is innovative, and uh, it has so far been uh, successful beyond what we, what we were even hoping. And, and that's great. But we have limited sponsorships. We don't litter it up like, uh, like a NASCAR uh, uh, Chevy. Uh, so this is, this is it. This is, this is the group that we have here. And of course, 
our executive producer Kevin Jack of WeStream, the uh, the creator and um, I guess you would call it uh, founder of this whole program thing here. Yeah, sure, um, I'll take and it. the technology. So sure, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you want to do? COVID numbers. Let's, let's do see that. Where we're at. Let's do that. Coming up at one o'clock. Just as a reminder, um, we have. Um, uh, Nigel joining us. Sorry, Nigel. I just went. I had a. I had a brain flat line there for a second. <laughs> Nigel of Nigel's Chief of Vlogs uh, has discovered, almost uh, serendipitously, as I understand it, uh, Fort Erie's well, Niagara's only what we would refer to as colored cemetery. And that's the that's the plaque that is relatively new. That's probably the newest thing in the cemetery and you can read it for yourself and there's Nigel town of Fort Erie colored cemetery and uh, fascinating piece of history and he's going to be along at one o'clock to tell us a little bit more about his sojourn to that very historic place in Niagara coming up at uh, that one now the COVID thing uh, there may be an announcement as of three o'clock this afternoon when Premier Ford takes to the uh, airwaves again to announce, as they say, some sort of gradual Ontario reopening. What that means, we don't know. It has been conjectured that it will mean some sort of recreational facility opening uh, golf courses and places like that. But we don't know when. Uh, there are a lot of people that are hoping that it's going to be effective as of Saturday. But we don't, we don't know. There's a lot of conjecture. He's coming up at 3. Coming up at 1 o'clock today is uh, an Ontario update as to the COVID situation. And here we are in Niagara. Now, we were down yesterday on the pro to, in the entire province to about 1,600 for the day, which is the lowest in a long time. Here we are for Niagara. New cases on May 19th, which was yesterday, 66. Now, Kevin, that's, if I'm not mistaken, the lowest we've been been seeing for quite some time. Here. Yeah, some time. Yeah. Active cases as of yesterday, 1,247. Resolved cases, 103. Total number of cases, it's kind of irrelevant, but it's 15,000 plus. Total number of deaths, unfortunately, 401, and even one is too many, but there you go. Total number of resolved cases, 13.7. Okay, um, so that's where we are right now. There has been an awful lot of criticism uh, in question period in, uh, on Parliament Hill, and a lot of times uh, the Premier has not been in attendance for question period on Parliament Hill at Queen's Park um, uh, for reasons that uh, are their own and they say are, are necessary, so whatever. Um, and of course the opposition is always screaming for something because that's what opposition parties do. It's always very easy to scream for something. It's always easy to be in opposition. Uh, not that I'm waving the flag for everything the Ford government has done. I mean, there have been some definitely stubbed toes along the trail here. Um, it's, it's just that politicians being what they are, one does something and the other screams at them that they should have done something else. It's just, it's just what politics is and it's what politicians do to try to make their points. So that's where we are right now there's going to be an announcement by some ontario officials at one o'clock with the COVID update whatever that means and then the so-called gradual reopening plan is going to be announced by ford at three o'clock this afternoon we'll probably know what he's going to announce before he announces it so they always do that just to sort of smooth the ramp up to the announcement. They make an announcement about the announcement and then the announcement about what the announcement is expected to be when the announcement comes up i got to find a hilarious video on that. Um, <laughs> I, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. There's some 411 stuff I know we wanted to touch on, yeah. including the, um, the the young missing girl. I was going to say teen. I think <laughs> she's 12 years old. And, and Nick originally posted this, I think, courtesy of the family the day yes. previous. 
And now uh, NRP has put out an official. Yeah, the family did post uh, the fact that this young lady was missing. Kate Kearns, last seen May 18th, 2021, uh, in Crystal Beach at about 4 o'clock. And uh, 5 foot 2, white complexion, 119 pounds, black hair. And then the Niagara Regional Police Service made it official. Uh, so that's why the posts have been uh, sort of numerous. The family put it up at first saying, help us find this girl. And then the police have made it an official search, an official missing persons, which takes, takes the search to a, a whole new level. So uh, anybody that has any idea of Kate's whereabouts or has seen her, please, by all means, get in touch with uh, the Niagara Regional Police Service, okay? Or go through, uh, go through Crime Stoppers, or, uh, I mean, that, that really is an organization that works. You don't have to, uh, you can remain anonymous, that's, that's the good part about it. Anonymity is the key to how that organization works, so feel free to go through that route as well, all right? And we hope that uh, we find Kate safe and sound sometime, sometime soon. Um, some other good news on Niagara 411 is uh, there was a fairly uh, bold truck theft. A local company who uh, is in the business of uh, moving people from place to place had a truck and trailer stolen. And I think, Kevin, it was within, what, 24 hours? I think so, yeah. Less than 24 hours, even that it was located and uh, the truck is uh, back safe and healthy with its family, which is, which is good because uh, people need these things for their livelihood, to be able to operate a business. There it is. Found. Thanks everyone for sharing. And that's the beauty of what Nick is able to accomplish, uh, along with you, the contributors to uh, Niagara 411, is these things that might have gone lingering or missing forever the power of the community is extreme and very strong and these things uh, oftentimes like this not always but often are are resolved uh, favorably in a positive way so that's great so to johnson moving and storage we're very, very happy that you have received your vehicle back and hopefully that it is unharmed and uh, hasn't caused you too much grief, but that's, uh, that's super. And uh, again, congrats to the Niagara 411 community for helping to make that happen. Kevin, it looks like you, you were just about to say something and then I... Uh, I think it was probably Go Leafs Go. I, I was scouring the <laughs> comments <laughs> there in Niagara 411. Yeah. And again, we have Nigel coming on here in a couple of minutes. And just so you know, Lee, he is in the green room. Okay. If anybody wants to come on and talk Leaf Habs or whatever you want to chat about, it is wide open. We had Gail come on the program in the first hour. Yeah. We'll talk to Nigel here in a couple of minutes. And then after that, it's it's wide open right up until the, the end of the show where we'll play you that uh, fake smile girl video from Kite. If anybody wants to come on, the, uh, the link to do so, the Zoom link is right in the description of the post. All you gotta do is click on that. Next thing you know, you're on live with uh, with Lee and you can you can talk about whatever you want and you can disparage the Habs. If you try and disparage the Leafs, um, I don't know, <laughs> no, we, might, no, lose, no, no, we no. might lose the connection, Lee. No, 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 we said we'll, we'll, we said we'll talk to anybody, even Habs fans, that's okay, that's okay. Now, don't be like that. Yeah, no shot, no shot. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Leafs in three. So here, you know, why don't we uh, why don't we watch? I a know little it's bit a seven of... game series. Don't don't send notes. I know. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> They're just little... that good. They're just that good. They could do it in three. All right, uh, we it's... do have uh, Nigel. Yeah, I was just going to watch a little bit of the video so people have an, an idea sure. of the uh, the preamble. So here we go. Here's Nigel. Uh, what, the, sorry, the Dina Howard Cemetery, uh, Curtis Road Cemetery, and a little cemetery around the corner. Because there's so many sunken uh, graves uh, with no markers and a lack of records, it's really hard to tell precisely who is actually really buried here. There is a few uh, names listed uh, on record. There's also a few tombstones you can just about read, uh, but a lot of people apparently have been buried here and there's no record of them. In the 1861 census, there are only two tombstones that identify the deceased as being colored. Uh, Russell family and the Bright family. I'm going to try and locate them as we walk through the, uh, 
the cemetery very, very shortly. This is amazing history here in Fort Erie. It's of a time of the mid, mid to late 1800s. They've kept the name. It's documented that this name was used, even though back in 1986, 87, there was a local guy who raised a question regarding the name of the cemetery and whether it, it was right to be named that in this day and age. But no, the, uh, the, board, the cemetery board looked into this and they concurred, no, we're going to keep the name on record. That is exactly what it was called back in the day. And those are the words people were using back in that day as well. We shouldn't. Excellent. Nigel joins us now. How you doing, Nigel? Long time no see. I'm pretty good. Can you hear me okay, Lee? I can indeed. Loud Perfect. and clear. Wonderful. I'm All doing right. good, thanks very much. Great. Um, tell us how you got online of, um, of this place that most of us did not even know existed. Well, up until about uh, four weeks ago, even I didn't know it, was, uh, it actually existed. Um, I was looking for ideas to go out and do some exploring locally. I already knew about the old fort, um, yeah. fort here in Fort Erie. So I want to see whether there's any any more history in the area. Uh, I'm aware of a couple of the things I'm looking into to do other things like the uh, the big iron bridge we have, the railway bridge is something I've been looking at as well. So I just started doing some research and typing in abandoned things in this area. And also I kicked, this word just popped up of a, an abandoned cemetery. Well, it says abandoned, but it clearly wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was listed as the colored cemetery. And uh, the name just struck out really quickly, like, why would something be called the Coloured Cemetery? So I started doing a few more Google searches, and like I said in my video, I ended up going down some kind of rabbit hole, uh, learning a bit more about the Underground Railroad, uh, the Mennonites, that came, uh, the Mennonites I can't, that originally settled down here. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Uh, Sir John Graves Simcoe, who divided up the counties. I went down a whole list of things, and eventually I ended up back at the, uh, the cemetery again. Uh, due to the slavery, which from the people coming over from the states, and technically they were refugees back then, even though we probably weren't using that term back then. Uh, but they came here and they settled here in this in this area, Ford area, and it was nicknamed Little Africa. And it turns out uh, some of these people that settled here are actually buried in that cemetery, and it was nicknamed Coloured Cemetery, and it kept the name all these years, and uh, and rightfully so as well. It's, yeah. it's amazing history. It is, and what I watched your your video from beginning to end, I found it very interesting. Thank you. And and that term that you just used in describing the the settlement was I had never, and I'm from the Fort Erie area. I grew up in in the Black Creek area. I uh, old Fort Erie was truly one of my favorite uh, areas to visit when I was a kid. I was always fascinated by uh, by 1812 and the old forts and things like that. And then for you to use that term, Little Africa, over all the years that yeah. I've known this area, I have never ever heard that term. Well, it's funny because because I've, I've driven up the uh, the boulevard there so many times over the years since I lived down here, and yeah. I never knew this even existed. And if you actually pull over where the marina is, is that little plaque at the side of the road, just a rock with a plaque placed on it, and there's a little um, iron, a little metal uh, monument. Uh, We're looking at it. We have it on the screen like right now. Sorry, pardon? We have it on the screen right now. For, okay, so I don't see, it, I don't see that screen yet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, that is all there is at the side of the road. And if you blink, you miss it. And I, and I think something so historical that happened and it happened in this area is kindly it's 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 not really talked about that much no. or I, like i said you didn't know about it i didn't know about no. it and i only came about it just by going down a rabbit hole looking at other things of, of interest in the area and i was and I, I was blown away by it i find it so fascinating now when you and mentioned when, I went when you to mentioned the cemetery the itself i enjoyed walking around and seeing that the um the the graves of the uh, so, well, the veterans of the War of 1812, which I am aware of, and things like that. So it was a very fascinating adventure I went on. And and these are all, I mean, obviously, uh, veterans of, of the War of 1812 that you mentioned that are in there. These are obviously black uh, veterans of that of Well, that I'm war. not too sure whether, I can't say for sure the black, because uh, um, some of the graves aren't even marked. There is some graves there uh, which does, and they've had a little plaque added probably in recent years saying a veteran of the War of 1812. So someone's done their historical background and okay. done some checking. Uh, but many of, the gray, many of the gravestones are in such a uh, bad state, it's hard to tell what's said. Um, I have heard and read online as well, there is meant to be some people who may have fought in the War of 1812, uh, people of color, uh, but there's no actually, I can't find any official record of it, it's just hearsay yeah. of what people are publishing as well. 
Uh, I got a lot of my information from um, a, a, a document I came across actually uh, as a PDF file uh, open to the public. Uh, it was written, I don't have the name of the person who wrote it now, I just missed it, but it was on the State University of New York College over in Buffalo. Okay. Uh, someone did a big article, a big read up of this and there's some fascinating things added to it the old plots of land in the area who used to own the land right and and some of the names today are still you hear about these names now the names that have been here since time began i guess yeah fascinating uh one of the one of the things that uh would be interesting and, and again you don't even know how you'd how you'd uh, check this out but when we were talking about uh per, potential uh soldiers of color in, in 1812 one would assume i mean if the name of the cemetery is fort erie colored cemetery one would make the logical su assumption that even those that are saying veteran of the, the war of 1812 would also be of color yeah yes. i mean you'd, you'd assume I, yeah. that yes yes uh but i think in the documents the only list like i think i did say that the only list so far, I found in uh, official documents that there's only two family names which are, which they were known of people of color. Yeah, Russell and Bright. Buried. Yeah, that's right. And they have the actual headstone. Um, but that's not to say there is other graves there because when I didn't add, there was a bit of the video I, I took out because uh, I didn't know if I was correct or not. But I've been to a few cemeteries before, and usually when you go to a cemetery, you can usually see the outline in the ground where there's probably been a even even decades. It can still have yeah. that line around it where it's something there and you do see a few of them in the cemetery where it is like a rectangular shape dotted a line it just makes you wonder are these unmarked graves that are here yeah it's, yeah the that miller's creek uh marina area has been a discussion point for niagara region and the niagara parks commission for ages now because there is and the and the town of fort erie uh, because there have been uh, plans to make that into a much bigger uh, tourist attraction and development with hotel and, and accommodations and things of that nature. And unfortunately, so many steps along the way have, uh, have stalled it, um, which is another whole issue uh, entirely. However, if it ever moves forward to the fact where that Miller's Creek Marina is is going to be developed as a lot of people would like to see it, perhaps that would be an opportunity to uh, to shine a light on that oh, uh, that, sure. that cemetery as one aspect of, of, of tourism that people would find incredibly interesting. Yeah, oh, for sure. I, I, I think it should be uh, it should be created. There should be something more there to honor what happened. Like, I mean, I, I'm going to start doing some more research just for my own uh, benefit. I want to learn a bit more about the Underground Railroad. I had heard about that in the past, but didn't really go into too much detail in reading about it. So now I'm fascinated uh, by it. So it's another step where I want to go to next and just learning about the local history we have here. There's, there's a lot of fact mixed in with fiction about the uh, Underground Railroad in Niagara and I don't pretend to be aware of all... <laughs> I found of... out that. I found that out. Yeah. <laughs> a certain house. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, a certain house just down the street from us, uh, which <laughs> never actually was a part yeah, of the... Yeah, and you know what? I, I drove past that that day I was making the video and thought, yeah. that's an interesting house. And it was when I was actually went home and did some more research. I found out the latest information on that house. It, it was all the myth, basically. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it is. It was never part of. Uh, I'm glad I never added it. <laughs> uh, I worked there, as a matter of fact. But, oh wow! Uh, yeah. Uh, now there was a tunnel, but it was for entirely uh, domestic means. It had nothing to do with the saving or the transportation of uh, slaves or ex-slaves from the United States. It, 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 it is a myth, but. If you uh, do have the time to, to do more of that research and to do, be sort of a myth buster and come back and tell us the truth, that'd be awesome. Well, I, I did get quite a, uh, quite a few good compliments from people who've known me for quite a while saying it was a very well put together video. It and, was. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. I really did enjoy making that because it, 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 it was one that took a lot of time because I did spend a lot of time that week just reading and thinking yeah. 
I, I, I got to get my facts right. And, and, and I got, I, like I said, I got, I got carried away with it. And I was actually really enjoyed making that video. It, was, it, it did. I learned a lot. It was well, good. Uh, you, did us a, you did us a service here in Niagara because it's, uh, it was uh, fascinating. And I'm glad you're to come back. Uh, everybody, it's Nigel's Cheap Vlogs. All you have to do is uh, go to YouTube and you'll find his channel. You can subscribe on there. Quite a number of followers. And uh, good work on this one, Nigel. Well done. Thank you very much, Lee. And thanks very much, Kevin. And I'll hopefully speak to you all very soon. Enjoy your summer. Yeah. Keep up the, re keep up the good research. I will do. Thanks very much. Take all care, right. guys. Bye, Nigel. Oh, my goodness. And, and there are other... Um, I mean, there's all kinds of organizations around uh, Niagara that do historical things. Our friend Dave Benison does some videos for Historical Niagara. Historical Niagara is another, another Facebook uh, site where you can learn more about our area. Uh, so that's, uh, that's good. And, uh, and Nigel does uh, good work. One of these days he'll tell us what he does as a day job or did or whatever, but he won't, he won't ever share that with us. He's like, uh, uh, he's like Batman. He goes into his cave and comes out as something else and I'm not quite sure what that is but uh, and yes we're gonna keep the office down the street because uh, if we didn't Superman would have no place to change so uh, so that's gonna be there for uh, a while until uh, until the previous owners figure out that it's still there <laughs> so they, they haven't noticed that the signs been changed Lee. no well at least we ha we haven't been told they've noticed has every loud vehicle gone by Fiddlers today? I think uh, everything nice that Corvette. I think I think everything that perhaps makes a noise has uh, has run up behind me. But that's kind of why we're here, isn't it? Absolutely. But nice to have some hustle and bustle back even before the lockdown finishes. I don't know where all these people are going. I mean, we entertain the idea of doing this show just on a green screen. And then we could be anywhere. In fact, we could just take yeah. a still of this or, or um, yeah. you know, um, superimpose a video behind it. But there's, there's nothing that beats the, the open window in the fresh air of St. Paul Street and, and seeing the, the hustle and bustle, although less hustly and less bustly yeah. with, the, with the COVID. But. Kev, have you seen anything uh, on, the, on the Beamsville fire? Any update on 411? On, uh, uh, I'll check that on in that. a second. But speaking of fires, this one uh, was kind of viral this week on... Uh, on Niagara 411. So I'll let you. Oh, this one, yeah. Here, this here are one, the details. Very. It, it looks like more than a grass fire, frankly, but apparently it, it's not. Very large grass fire with possible railway ties involved in Southwell and near Deer Street. Crews on the scene trying to extinguish, but it's a difficult area to reach, as you can see by that shot. Pelham Fire Department has been called in to assist, and then. Of course, some of the comments were concerned about that. You see the tanker car sitting right next to the fire on the tracks. And apparently, what was in that car, how, why it was parked there, we don't know. And doesn't matter, really. Except for the fact that what was in that was paraffin. Um, so... I, I don't think you can harm paraffin. The the only thing it does actually is, it, I mean, you make candles out of it, so it's like a it's wax. It just, it just melt, <laughs> I guess. Uh, uh, how do you how do you store paraffin in a car like that? A tank? So I'm I'm assuming it would be all a liquid in a car like that, wouldn't it? That'd be my guess. And then. So not much harm would come to it. I mean, it would just stay. Well, at some point, it could a get a hot melted liquid. <laughs> I mean, if it's a liquid, it would expand and then it would increase in pressure. Like th there would be some sort of explosion risk, weren't there? Or, and then or when they, it, and they then, figure that out. And then when it cools, would it harden? Well, it wouldn't cool down below the liquid temperature that it was at, right? Right. But it wouldn't cool below where it was. Yeah, where it was. So, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Some that, some uh, some chemist thought. some chemist somewhere watching this show knows the answer to those to those questions. How you package paraffin for transportation, I do not know, but I'm assuming because it was in a tanker style uh, train car that it would be a liquid. That's uh, again, that's just that's just me a know nothing, just making an assumption. All right, here's the Beamsville fire. Uh, and uh, Lincoln fires were responding the area fly road. That's not much has changed. Well, let's take a look at the comments here, you know. 
Maybe I'll teach some people some stuff here. You can search here by most relevant and newest. I'll go to newest. Because, of course, those would be the updates. People may not know You're that you smart, can actually Kevin do that. You're smart, Kevin Boy. I'll tell Facebook. you, no moss growing on your north side. You know what's going on. Uh, no, no, no poor chickens. Well, again, so this is five hours ago. It just means that somebody's commented on here six minutes ago. Okay. But it was the chicken barn. It wasn't the turkey barn. Exactly. It was a chicken farm, not a, not a turkey yeah, farm. Yeah, just so you know which one it was. And again, so a lot of these, you know, why they're showing up in the feed is because somebody commented 32 minutes ago. Right. Uh, so okay. here you go. So the fact that there's not a whole lot of new posts would seem to indicate that the fire is under control. It's the structure. None of the adjacent structures went up in flames. Nothing at risk, stuff like yeah. that. That's my assumption. And then, of course, there's the old, uh, you know, fried chicken comments and turkey bits and stuff, which is not funny for the people that own that property. Um, and it was chickens, not turkeys, to repeat. Uh, I, I didn't realize it was that area that was that prolific with raising chickens and turkeys in, in proximity to one another. but. So it's not the turkey place, it's the chicken place, all right? Just in case these are people that you know or have connections to the area or whatever, just to kind of now there nail was, that down. There was a rumor there, Lee, that uh, Swiss LA was setting up a pop-up shop, but uh, it's not true. Okay. Oh, were those the type of insensitive comments? Those were the type of insensitive okay. comments I was referring to, yes, Kevin. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. I was just providing an example. I, yeah, yeah, just in the interest of full disclosure. <laughs> Thank you. we got to uh, get you something better than that. Is that one of those, is that paper towel from the bathroom? Oh, yeah, what's wrong with that? I'm not. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. It, it itches me. It pains me watching you wipe your face with that. That's okay. It's, where's, your, where's your kerchief? It's, it's mine. Did your dad used to walk around with that leaf? No. With a kerchief all no. the time in no. his in his no. pocket? No. Oh, oh, uh, a handkerchief? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I was just going for the kerchief. Oh, no, my dad always had a handkerchief in his pocket. It was very of its era, wasn't it? Yeah, no, uh, his his whole life, every day, all day, every day. Did Kleenex ruin the handkerchief? I think it did. It made it made the handkerchief obsolete. Because that's pretty much what the handkerchief was for, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you got a, you got a Kleenex well, with you at all times. Yeah, but it, it's kind of a... It was kind of a gross concept when you think about it. I mean, out of the pocket, under the nose, back into the pocket. Eh, I don't know. But then again, old uh, grandmas, didn't they always used to have some tissue tucked right up under the sleeve? Oh, to this, to this day. My wife's originally from London. Her mother grew up during the Blitzkrieg, you know, and all this stuff. To this day, there's Kleenex in the, you know, in the sleeves. Uh, your wife or your mother-in-law? Oh, my wife got it from her. Oh, your wife does that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ever tried to break the habit or broach oh, the topic? Are you kidding? No, you're a smart man. That's why you've been <laughs> no, married no, this No, 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 no. There are some things that do not change. Uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of London, they're going nuts over there because the pubs are opening now, and uh, they're, they're patio dining, and uh, there are even some places over there, apparently, that in order to get people to hug again, they have had speed dating evenings at the at the pubs they're just boy when they open they open hard <laughs> so uh yeah england is uh england is opening and uh one of the other things too uh, another headline i saw today is that europe is going to be accepting vaccinated travelers but they're not sure when and they're not sure how but it's in the planning stages of opening up Europe. Hopefully they don't do it, to, do it too soon. There was also an announcement this week that our borders between Canada and the United States will not be relaxed uh, at least until the end of June. That, that period of time has been officially extended, which uh, for my, from my perspective is a good thing. Um, Let me throw but, this at you, Lee. Oh, oh sorry, on. finish the thought. No, I, I, other people are thinking uh, like, what's what's the point it's okay but i think the longer the borders stay tight the better kevin when the borders reopen uh let's assume you know everything's all the way COVID's behind us what have you what's the uh where's the first joint you're going to go have dinner over the river me yeah what's I, your spot i won't probably no i eh? i didn't go over very often anyway i i'd pop by the um with friends or that like to go over okay. i'd pop into the uh casino once in a while 
just for something different. Um, there were a number of restaurants that I used to love to go to over there that aren't there anymore. But I'm a, I, I'm I'm an old guy. I, all the restaurants I remember over there uh, are are Long ancient. Gone. So um, they're all gone. Just going back to international politics, you and I were having a good laugh about this before the show. Oh. So let's bring it to the show. Oh yeah, look at this is a story not to be believed. Um, there, of course, is our prime minister. He has a laptop mounted on a few books so that it's at eye level and he doesn't have to bend over for the photo op. He is doing some sort of Zoom online meeting thing right there. And uh, he was going to do something with his kids or something too, wasn't he? Uh, I think this was a school. A sc yeah, okay. Yeah, you see they're kind of school-aged people there. but Yeah, all right. So it was a, it was a photo op from the PMO. Now... But here's where the story gets goofy. You see the laptop he's using? It's very much like this one. See? Very much like this one, don't you think? All right. This here happens to be uh, a 15 inch screen. They don't make them anymore. Uh, Apple MacBook Pro. You can tell because it's got a little apple on it right there and it lights up at night it's really it's really pretty so look at the prime minister's laptop and it's got a great big honking apple on it as well well it's not an apple computer as it turns out some sharp-eyed uh, digital uh, uh, platform sleuth happen to determine that it's actually a Hewlett Packard laptop. It's an HP. Why do we have the Prime Minister on a Hewlett Packard laptop with an Apple insignia sticker on the lid? Kevin, you want to fill us in? Because they put an Apple sticker over the HP sticker so that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau would look more hip and cool to the kids. Because Apple is cooler than HP. That's what? It. Really? This is what people in the Prime Minister's office, this is what people in the PMO are worried about? It's I have no words. I, I'm, I'm like George Costanza. I am without speech. I have... I have, I have no words. What, so, the, what the hell do we care what kind of laptop he's on? So let me, let me go through the thought process here yeah. of, of the brain trust of the Prime Minister. And just so you know, it happens to be the Prime Minister. And uh, we use brain trust as an oxymoron type phrase. We're not weighing in politically one way or the other. If anybody did this, we'd be holding their feet to the fire. It's ridiculous. Oh, I don't care what party it is. No. So, so there's somebody around the Prime Minister who thinks that it would be better if you were using a MacBook instead of an HP laptop. Yeah. Okay, that notion unto itself is ridiculous. It's not like Apple is a Canadian company and we need to look like we're supporting this homegrown product. It's just reference. And it's not like HP is from Iran. I mean, it's just... <laughs> it's just reference. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, fine. So let's accept the fact that you think it would be better if the Prime Minister was using an Apple MacBook. Okay, fine. I've already accepted that ridiculous notion. All right. So now, let's solve the problem. Do we A, purchase a MacBook, or B, purchase an Apple sticker and stick it over top of his HP laptop? They chose B. This is a ridiculous decision from the onset <laughs> to think that it matters, and then your solution to said problem is even more ridiculous. It's adding insult to injury. Now, there is another, there is another possibility of the train of thought here, Kevin, that occurred to me. Uh, if you're using uh, an HP laptop, or anything other than an Apple, you are using Windows. Okay, you're using Microsoft software. It could be that someone in their infinite wisdom did suggest to our Prime Minister to use uh, a Mac. But 
if he is unfamiliar with the Apple world, with the Mac world, which is different than Microsoft and Windows, he might have said, no, I'm more comfortable with this. I want to use, I, I'm a Windows guy. Fine and dead, that's okay. He's a Windows guy. But then, that's where the rubber hit the road and, and, and one, flew over, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. This is nest. Applegate. Yes, one flew over the cuckoo's nest at that moment in time and said, Oh, well, let's just throw a sticker on it. Do you care if I like? No. Nah, nah, nah. Why didn't they put? Why didn't they put a maple leaf or a, or a little Canadian flag over the over the insignia? Why did it have to be an apple? It's it's a little thing, Lee, but to me, it speaks very loudly. It speaks volumes, as they to say, to the people that are influencing the decisions yeah. around the prime minister. The fact that they even care between <laughs> HP and Apple is kind of a ridiculous notion, but I'll accept that. What I'm unwilling to accept is your solution to said perception problem. Yeah. And, and Lee, somebody pointed out here via social media as well that it's a, it's a very slippery slope, as you, as you can see. Well, this is, that was my point. Once you get started on that tack, boy, you got to... I mean, look at that official Lacoste shirt there. <laughs> that had to have... <laughs> That's funny. That had to have cost that man. What are those? Those polos go for seventy-five, eighty-five dollars a pop. But can you can, can you imagine, Kevin? I mean, if you're the, well, you are. You're the owner manager uh, of a of a of a company, and you're concerned with your image, like any of us that own businesses are concerned with our image. And somebody somebody comes to you and says, Kevin, uh, we have this perception thing. I want to talk with you about. It. Uh, okay, wouldn't you, as the guy behind the big desk, say, like, walk through the logistics of how we're going to deal with this and not create a bigger problem than you started with? I mean, wouldn't you think? So it all has to come, it all has to come back to the prime minister's chair. I mean, he knew they were putting a sticker on the darn computer. Yes. Why would you allow that? Nobody else has a... All these Apple lovers, nobody has a MacBook with them that they can just prop up there for the he Prime Minister to use. He could have mine, but I was seven hours away. Yeah, maybe he doesn't have your number. We should we should get it to him. Um, <sighs> They're also good computers. Want to uh, <laughs> provide an update here on the uh, Niagara 2022 Summer Games, but more importantly, yeah. the building up at Brock University because 2022 Canada Games uh, put out a post today with some photos. Right. Updates because we did a story on this not uh, not all that long ago. There we go. So that looks like the arena, one of the two. Yeah. It uh, it doesn't look like a whole lot of extra work has been done since the last time we did this, Kevin. That's coming along. Unless I got a unless I've got a really bad memory, it doesn't look much evolved. They do say that they're going to have uh, everything completed by January 2022, so ahead oh, of I the can games. See that. Yeah. And that was right. never the original plan. Just, you know, the original plan was never to have that entire facility completed before the games when it was in 2021. Right. Yeah. It was to have the portions they were going to need for the games. And sure. then, so now the entire thing will be completed. Oh, and I want to make sure to show the, uh, the track here because this is very cool. Uh, another thing that... Uh, oh, sorry. I'm not showing it. Oh, no, it's all right. There you will. Go. There you go. That is, that's a nice looking track there. Yeah. All right. So Absolutely. we're getting there, and hopefully, hopefully everybody, by the time we get to that uh, that uh, point on the calendar, we're past this uh, this silliness. Another story appeared uh, about uh, the the tourist attraction that will be the uh, Niagara Power Generating Station in uh, in Niagara Falls, which is due to open to the public. All things evolving uh, as it should, if the universe. Uh, unfolds as we expect uh, in early July it will be open to the public and uh, there was a really nice story about that in uh, in the Globe and Mail over the last couple of days and we will have some uh, some of the folks from the from that facility on as we work our way through June and get ready for that to open as a tourist attraction here in Niagara. I think that's, I think it's going to be so, so successful. And this is only phase one. There's phase two of that operation that's going to be available as well that uh, runs underneath 
on, on the lower level and down to the falls, et cetera. So that's going to be so cool. Yeah, and that opens up Canada Day, Lee. Canada Day, July 1, yeah. And Canada Day is on a Thursday. For all I know, we'll be live on Canada Day. We've yet to really decide if we're going to be doing a show that day. Yeah, well. We may, but uh, we are going to be interviewing somebody from Niagara Parks to talk specifically about the attraction. And, Absolutely. Uh, and what's all involved. And yeah. it's, a, it's very cool. Very yeah. cool piece of Niagara history. Uh, and li- probably it'll be the Thursday before that we, uh, we chat with them. But anyway, we'll tell, you, we'll tell you more about that. I would like to thank, as always, uh, our title sponsor, Gail's Gas Bars, Jessica Friesen. Uh, we always uh, love the support of you and your company uh, for being here as our title sponsor, fueling this program in now episode 20 of season two. Thank you very much for that. Our other supporters, always, always a pleasure. Carlo and the gang at Performance Heating and Air, uh, Larry and your crew at uh, Enwick High Speed Internet, Mark Shirk uh, and his gang at Verge Insurance Group, all locally owned, operated, founded, supporting Niagara type businesses. This is Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry, that would be me. And it's all powered, designed by, and uh, shot by, and delivered by, edited by, etc. WeStream, uh, Canada's premier live streaming company. Uh, If there's an event uh, or an item that uh, you think you would like other people to see or you'd like to share with, uh, by all means get in touch with uh, Kevin and Brandon at uh, at WeStream, it's always always a pleasure. To uh, our guest Nigel from uh, giving us the tour of the Fort Erie Colored Cemetery, that was just uh, terrific, and I know we'll have an update from him at some point in the near future. Really, really cool story. Uh, as well as uh, this gentleman that uh, owns uh, a business with his brother, a media entertainment business here in uh, Boscram Entertainment here in uh, St. Catharines. He lives in St. Catharines. We're gonna play you out with uh, a song called Fake Smile Girl. And it's one that he did three or four years ago. And uh, you will, if you watch the background going through this, you will see local points of uh, familiarity. So, uh, been a pleasure to be here on this May 20. Have yourself a really, really good, safe, long Victoria Day weekend. Uh, Kevin, as always, a pleasure. And uh, here we go. This is Kite and Fake Smile Girl to play us off the stage. Have a good one.
take some time You ain't messing with my mind With that fake smile, girl You alone and out of luck Competition's growing up Hope you never get stuck With that fake smile, girl See, now you on your own Better leave my ass alone Cause I ain't coming home To your fake smile, girl You don't even clean or cook Sneaking through my Facebook That's why I wrote this song and hook For a fake smile, girl Better mind your own biz Don't study how I live To think I woulda give a rip For that fake smile, girl Yeah, we might have had fun But I'm happy that we done Now nah, I know you ain't the one With that fake smile, girl She told me I could rap Instead of being my bag I think I fell in love With your fake smile, girl Now you don't even know Who told me you were yo So I kept it on the low For that fake smile, girl But now I'm on the grind Wasting time, you ain't messing with my mind with that fake smile, girl. You alone and out of luck, competition's growing up. Hope you never get stuck with that fake smile, girl.